those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall. Welcome to the Eagles. Are you ready for the message tonight? And then we get to pray over it. Isn't it wonderful to be able to get together each week and do this? I'm so blessed that God has us still connected with each other and still praying. And I just want you to know, even when we finish here, Pastor John and I, we pray through the week for all of you that join us. We pray for the families that you represent. We call the blessings of God over you. And we trust that God is blessing you and that you've had a glorious week so far. So let's commit tonight to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. You said man cannot live by natural bread alone, but by every word that comes from the heart of God. And Lord, I've done my best to receive this word from your heart. And I believe that your heart is in this, that this is a word in season for many, many of us tonight. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me to minister this word. I thank you for helping us as we connect together to be praying together so that your will is done in people's lives in the church. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Father, as we commit this time, as we commit our steps to you. Oh, yeah, the steps, Father. We thank you for our steps tonight that we are so in harmony with the Spirit of God and for the very plan of God going forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we say, Holy Spirit, come. Breath of God, come right now and breathe into this meeting. Let there be such a presence of our Lord, of our Savior in this meeting tonight that, Father, that very presence touches every one of us, no matter where we are, in, no matter of our location right now, that your very presence touches us, that the Holy Spirit begins to breathe, breathe into us tonight. So we say, welcome, Holy Spirit, and we honor you, honor you with all our hearts, soul and might, in Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God, wow, wow, his presence. Thank you for your presence. I wanna to talk tonight about, you know, just something that came up this week, you know, um, just, and, and people were facing a, a, a loss of their peace, and I sat down and the Holy Spirit says, I want you to, to, to minister on that. And what he said to me is this, don't give your peace away. Don't give your peace away. You stand against the enemy when he tries to come against your peace, no matter what is going on. So I'm trusting that you'll be blessed by this message tonight. You know, we can be living with lots of circumstances happening around us, whether that's at home or in our workplace, in our business place, or maybe even in school or university. There can be storms that arise. We didn't plan for them, but they just popped up before our eyes. And Jesus said this, that when you face those circumstances, when you face those storms, he said this in John 14, he said, peace I leave with you, peace. A peace I leave with you, do not let your heart be troubled. I look that up, it says, don't let your heart be anxious, don't let it be worried. And then the Holy Spirit said this to me, 
that which is on the outside of you, do not let it get on the inside of you and don't give your peace away. Stay in that peace. Glory be to God. You know, I'm sure many of us have had those opportunities where we've got so much coming at us from every angle that you can be so tempted to give your peace away, lock yourself away, because it, 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 it can be so um, overwhelming to us with what's going on. But he says, that which is on the outside of you, Eileen, don't let it get on the inside of you. Don't be anxious. Don't be nervous, afraid or distressed about anything. I'm sure we all can say that we've been at times where we face that. And maybe some of us have given into it and later repented to God because we let that anxiety, we let that get on the inside of us and it affected us. And it can affect people in so many different ways, you know. It can affect your mood to where you start getting mean and grumpy with people. It can affect you in your sleeping to where you're tossing and turning and you're not sleeping the way you should. But he says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be nervous, afraid, or, or, or distressed, but pray. Here's such a key to when we face things. You know, when something arises, we really need to go straight to the Father and begin to pray, fellowship with Him as we pray in tongues for a little bit and let Him begin to speak to us about what we need to do in what is confronting us. Amen. Glory to God. And in John 14 and verse 1, let me read it to you first from the Amplified. He says, Do not let your heart be troubled, distressed, or agitated. You believed in, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on God. Then believe in, adhered to, trust, and rely on me. Verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you, not as the world gives. Do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourself to be fearful or intimidated or cowardly or unsettled. Don't let you go. Don't go through that. You need to go straight to God, pray in the Spirit, draw close to Him. He'll draw close to you as you're praying in the Spirit and He'll give you the wisdom that you need, that I need to walk through that or how to deal with that circumstance, that thing that's risen up around us. You know, He said, don't be troubled. I looked up some of those words. I didn't give all of them for tonight because of time, but it means that word trouble, don't be worried. Don't be distressed. What does that mean? Extreme anxiety, sorrow or pain. Don't be agitated. What does that mean? To get flustered and upset and troubled in your mind. And you know, I've been there at times where I've gone to bed and I've tossed and turned because I've gone and taken the thing on the inside of me instead of leaving it where it was on the outside and trusting God that God's wisdom would give me a word to know how to deal with what was confronting me. Listen to John 14 in the Passion Bible. It says, don't worry and surrender to fear. Isn't that good for all of us? For you believed in God, now trust and believe in me also. Verse 27 in the Passion Bible, it says, I leave you the gift of, I, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace um, given by the world, but perfect peace. Don't yield to the fear or don't be troubled in your heart. Instead, be courageous. And that's what God wants us to do, to go straight to him. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Draw close to him. He'll draw close to you. And he will. You say, Father, I need wisdom to know what to do and to do about this. I need your wisdom on how to walk through this, Father. You know, 
We want to walk in the peace of God. And that means that we need to spend time with him. When these circumstances, when these storms rise up against us, it, we need to go and pray, draw close to him and don't give your peace away. Don't give your peace away because the thief cometh to rob, to kill and destroy. He wants to take that peace away. He wants you tossing and turning, but you're not going to give your peace away. You see, his peace, God's peace will guard your heart and your mind. So don't let your mind get occupied with all about the, the storm, all about the circumstance that's going on. No, stay focused on God. Be occupied with God. Be praising God. Be praying in the spirit and bring down those thoughts and start spending time praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because this is a whole design of Satan to get us off track, to get us, uh, 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 pull the peace of God out of us. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to stay focused on him. Bring down your thoughts and begin to pray in the spirit. And in Jude 20, it says, beloved, build yourself up, come up over that situation in the spirit and wait on God to give you the counsel, to give you the wisdom that you need to do deal with that and pray because it's building you up strong on the inside. And remember, Proverbs says the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in bodily pain and trouble. Glory be to God. You watch when you start praying in the spirit that that strength will start steadying things out on the inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we think we've just got to get away from here. Well, I, I'm just going to lock everything up and get away from here for a bit. But there's nothing wrong with getting away for a while. But remember, you're going away with it. And no matter what your location is, unless you've let go of it and you've let God begin to counsel you in it, you're still going to face the struggle and the torment of that attack, of that storm, that was exactly what the enemy wanted. He wanted us agitated. He wanted us upset. He wanted that problem on the inside of you instead of staying on the outside of you. And that's what we have to learn to do when we face a storm, when we face things in our life, and we all will face things in our life. And we've got to learn no matter what comes at us, don't give your peace away. Don't give that peace away. It will guard your heart through that. It will help you to stay anchored as you're walking through it. And God will instruct you. The Holy Spirit, the truth giving spirit will begin to counsel you how to step through this, how to walk through this. And on top of that, as you purpose not to take it into your life, you'll begin to sleep. You won't get mean. You won't get angry, you know, because that's what it does. It When it starts to agitate someone so much so, they become snappy with their words, more aggressive with their words. And we don't want to be known for that. Amen. We don't want that. So we're seeking God to seek his wisdom and his counsel. Remember when Jesus came to this earth, who was Jesus? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And when Jesus came into your heart, came into my heart, peace came into our hearts. So it doesn't really, don't let things get, get to you. Don't let them get inside of you to where you're not sleeping. You're, you're emotional that the least little thing around you track triggers a wrong response because of the agitation that's going on on the inside of you. I don't know if many of you can relate with that, but I sure can myself. I've been there, done that, and thank God that I've learned to start not surrendering to the agitation and darkness, to him trying to trouble me so that that thing gets on the inside of me and I'm not resting the way that I should. Glory to God. So we, we need to begin to walk in the peace of God and don't let any thief or any robber steal from you. Make a decision to walk in it. 
You know, you may be facing some things that are trying to rob your peace, but you or I don't have to yield to it. It may be pressing at you, but and remember the whole purpose of that attack is to rob your peace. It is, it's to get it inside of you, rob your peace. But we have to make a decision straight away. I'm not giving my peace away. I'm going to walk in the peace of God that Jesus came to give me. And I'm going to keep my whole focus on him. Hallelujah. So Jesus, right now we pray in the Holy Ghost. That's what we need to learn to do. Oh, Father, you know everything. You created everything. You were in our past, you're in our present, and you know our future. So as we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us the counsel and the wisdom that we need to walk through this to the other side. We thank you for peace, your peace that will guard our heart and mind. We've made a decision. We've planted ourselves in that decision that we're not going to give away our peace. We're not going to surrender to the circumstances. Oh, glory to God. And we just praise you, Father. We just thank you for helping us. We thank you that when we call on you, you answer us, that you're with us, that you deliver us. Oh, glory to God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the truth-giving Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said it was needful for him to go away so he could send you into the earth. And I thank you that you are the truth-giving spirit, that you help us. You're the helper, the counselor, the advocate, the one that's called alongside us. And we thank you for wisdom a wisdom on our every step, a wisdom on our every word that comes forth from our hearts in Jesus' name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And you spend some time because you do, you go through things. It can be family things, business things, job things, all kinds of things that the devil will try to use. And he'll get you so focused on a person or a situation that you start getting all agitated about it and then you want to I want to get in there and confront that no because you'll be doing it in your flesh you don't want to do that you want to spend time fellowshipping with the Lord spend time in the word the Lord is my shepherd because he's my shepherd I shall not want I'm not going to lack for wisdom in this situation his wisdom is going to guard me and guide me it's going to guard and guide the words it's going to guard and guide my steps and I'm not going to respond like the world. I'm going to respond like Jesus. I'm going to respond through the love of God, through the peace of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you can have it pressing at you from every side to steal your peace. But we, we've made a decision now that we're not giving our peace away. We're not going to walk. We're going to walk in that peace that Jesus came to give every single one of us. He said, do not let your heart be troubled, Eileen. Don't let it be distressed. Don't let it be agitated. Don't let those things get inside of you. They're in a, a desire. They're an attack of darkness to start pulling you off, getting you out of things, feeling like you've got to hide. What am I going to do? Just lock everything up and hide? No, we're going to go to the Father and we're going to believe that he gives us the wisdom that we need in this situation, but also the strength to do it the right way in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we're not going to hide at home. We're not going to close the doors and try and, God, I just wait in here till it's all over. No, it's all over us. <laughs> And we need to be dealing with that. It doesn't matter what the enemy will put in your path. Say, no, I'm in his peace. I'm not giving that peace away. I'm not going to surrender my peace. Jesus, thank you. You said, peace, I leave you peace I give to you. So I thank you for that peace right now that's God in my heart, God in my words, God in my thoughts, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your peace. 
Oh, we praise you for it. Glory be to God. And you, you, doesn't matter what the enemy throws, you stay in that peace. You fix your eyes on Jesus. Who is Jesus? He's the author and the finisher of your faith. You know, people look for peace in all the wrong places. Ha. And the way that God brings peace into our lives was it came through his love. That's what brought peace to us through his love. You know, when we walk in love, we hold the peace of God in that situation. When we refuse to be drawn into it and speak wrong words, words that probably later on that we're going to feel that we should never have said and have to repent to God, no. We're going to walk in love because it's love that causes the peace of God to steady everything down on the inside of us. And it's quite interesting, you know, I said to the Lord, oh, this message, and he said, because many people right now are facing little schisms and little things cropping up and, and there's a temptation to respond to them, to interact with them when we don't. We don't. We interact with the word. We interact with the counsel of God and let him begin to lead us and guard us and guide us and bring us in to that right place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we people look for peace in wrong places. Do you know where it's found? Let me say it again, in the love of God. When you begin to focus on that, everything begins to settle down in you. Love endures long, it's patient, it's kind, it's never envious, it never boils over with jealousy. It's not vainglorious, it does not display itself haughtily. It's not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. It does not act unbecomingly. The love of God in me believes the best, the best outcome in this situation. That's what we're believing for, Father, the best outcome. And it's going to come through your wisdom and through me walking in the love of God because I don't want to be a wrong example of you, Father. I want to be a good example of you and copy you as my beloved Father. In Ephesians 5 and verse 1, it says, copy him and walk in love. That's where the peace comes. Then you start, it starts to wrap around your heart. It starts to wrap around your mind. Glory be to God. You know, the peace of God is not the lack of problems because we're always going to be facing challenges, facing things all the time in our life. So it's not the lack of problems in our life. It's it. It's not the peace of God is not a certain place. Well, you know, if I go here, go there. No, I've been in some lovely places and felt the enemy eh, eh, trying to eh, disturb my peace through words or through the actions of people. And sometimes I've responded. I've let go of that peace. I've let go of that tranquil state that I've been in as I've been fellowshipping with God. I've been in the most lovely place and yet all my peace has been disturbed. And yet listen to this. You know, it, when I sat with my daughter and nursed her when she left this earth to go to heaven, I experienced such a wonderful peace, his peace. I just sat there. I didn't ask God all kinds of questions. I just sat there. And I thank God that she was with him, that she was in perfect peace. And you know what happened? John and I, we experienced such a wonderful peace. You know, right in the place of your trial, you can receive his peace. The peace of God is not the absence of problems. We think, well, if all the problems go away, I'll be in peace. No, the peace of God is not the absence of problems. It's the presence of Jesus to enable you and me to walk in them and to walk through them. 
Let me say that again to you. I even need my heart registering more on that. The peace of God is not the absence of problems. It's the presence of Jesus to enable you and me to walk in it and through it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, it was in that place that God showed my husband and I the greatest peace. We experienced the greatest peace. We couldn't understand how we had that peace. But I do know one thing that we did. We didn't allow any questioning. The devil trying to make you question, trying to, to throw things at you. We went to sleep listening to the word of God, waking up with praise and worship, listening again to the word of God. And God kept us in perfect peace as we begin to walk through that change in our life and walk through all the things that were needful that us for us to do at that time you know in the place of your greatest struggle there is available to you and I a peace that you just don't understand how can I be walking in such peace such tranquility when all of this is going on around me because he's God in your heart and he's God in your soul because you're looking to him and he's taking control there. And as you keep your focus on him, he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. As you begin to pray, he starts strengthening you because you know when you face something that you never expected, you know, everything in your body wants to shake. Everything wants to uh, um, respond to the trial in front of you but he keeps you in perfect peace. And that peace somehow stabilizes your body. It stabilizes your heart as you're walking through the steps of that. Glory be to God. He's such a good God. Even though you've got a great big struggle that's all out there in front of you, there's a peace that the world's got no idea of, that we can walk through this in peace without the struggle, without the anxiety that people go through. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. You know, you may be facing something right now. It may be a doctor's report. It may be a hospital trip. It may be something, something's come up somewhere. Let me encourage you. Just begin to focus on him and begin to thank him. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you said, don't let my heart be troubled. I'm not going to put allow my heart to be troubled in this or distressed, and I'm not going to get agitated. I'm going to keep my focus on you. You're my healer. You're my savior. You're my strength. You're my refuge. You're my very present help in a time of trouble. You're my counsel. Your word, Father, by the Holy Ghost will counsel me how to walk through this, to give me an answer, to answer things that may be coming up against us. That's how you walk through a storm. You know, my, my English soccer club, Liverpool, they sing this song. I'm sure I've shared it once before, and they hold their scarves up. And it says, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. We can do that because we're looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. And he is going to bring us to the other side. And there'll be times where you go, wow, how did we do that? Yeah, there's been times that I've thought, Father, how did I come through that? I've had people say that, how did you, how did you do it, God? How did you walk through that, his word? How did you get through that praying in the Holy Spirit? And that strength of the Spirit stabilized my husband, my son, and myself as we began to walk through it. Glory be to God, and he'll do the same for you. You know, in Psalm 119 and verse 165, it says there is such a great peace 
and will bring, sorry, this such great peace and will bring, that will bring to the lovers of your word. Let me say it again. There's such a great peace that will bring to the lovers of your word where that nothing will cause them to stumble. Soon as you go into that, soon as you're tempted maybe to say the wrong thing, to engage wrongly, you go, Father, thank you that you've placed in me your love and that love in me enables me not to get entangled in all of this for the love of God in me is believing for the right outcome and I'm walking in that love and I thank you for that love that's guarding and guiding my words, guarding and guiding my actions in Jesus' name. I praise you, I honor you, I esteem you. You know, the enemy will try to bait you. He'll pressure you to try and get you angry, to get you mean, to get you mad. But don't let it get inside of you. Go back to John 14 verse 1 and read it and read it and draw close to God and pray. And don't let anything steal your peace. For he said, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I just read this just before I came to minister to you. It says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you'll have tribulations and trials, distresses and frustrations, but be of good cheer, take courage, be confident certain and undaunted for I have overcome the world and I have deprived it of its power to harm you or conquer you. And you go back to those scriptures, you begin to feed on the word of God. Hallelujah, that he'll keep us in perfect peace. As you begin to pray in tongues, that it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. Don't let it get on the inside. Don't let your heart get troubled because soon as your heart gets troubled and disturbed and agitated, then he's got on the inside of you with that problem and it's going to affect everything, your words, your actions, your sleep, and you don't want that in your life. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace while your mind is stayed on me, while your mind is stayed on my word, while your mind is stayed on walking in love, walking through this and not getting angry, not getting mean, not getting mad, not speaking words that later on you're going to have to take back or repent to God because we spoke the wrong words. No, Father, thank you that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that regardless of what trial, what circumstance, what we face in our life, that you are the guide on the inside that helps us yes, to Father. walk through to the other side. You yeah, are that yeah, sure. guide inside of us. And as we begin to yield thank to you, you as we begin to pray in yes. our heavenly language, we thank you for heaven to counsel us, oh, heaven to yeah, guard yeah, us yeah, and guide yeah. us that we step through this in the love of God. We thank you for thank it, Father, you. that we're thank not you, responders to oh, the yeah, trials yeah, sure, and the yeah, tribulations, yeah. but we're responders to the oh. love of God. God. And we walk in the peace of God that passes all understanding. Father, we praise you. You praise you we and praise honor you. you Glory be to God. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, Father, what Lord, a great Rabbi God you are. You're the shepherd of our lives. And thank you that there's nothing that confronts us, that takes you off God. That as we come to you, you knew our past. You know where we are. Are, you know our future and that you guide our steps, guide our words in this situation. 
And we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, Father. Oh, Father, for whoever right now that might be facing a trial, a circumstance of life, and they're feeling the pressure on the outside of them, we thank you tonight for touching their hearts, lifting their hearts. Holy Spirit, we're asking you to come and breathe on them tonight. Oh, no, no, Jesus, you said, peace I give you. Peace I bequeath to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. And we draw on that peace. We draw on that peace that can anchor our hearts, anchor our souls, and Father, it will anchor our reactions and our words in the name of Jesus, that we don't become reactive. Hallelujah. What does he say in 1 Corinthians 13? Love and do as long, it's patient and kind. Love is never envious, never boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful, vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It's not conceited, arrogant, nor nor is it inflated with pride. It is not rude and unmannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. The love of God in us does not insist on its own rights and its own way, for it's not self-seeking. It's not touchy, fretful, or resentful, and it takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Listen to this in verse 8. Love never fails. Mm -hmm. When we walk Amen. in love, it never <laughs> fails. It never <laughs> fails. And I think sometimes we forget that. There's been many times in my life where I've had people say things about me and it's stirred up my heart and I've wanted to go out and, and I've wanted to correct it. I've wanted to put it right. And the Lord said, don't do anything. I'm the guarantee of your vindication. I am the warrant against all accusations. You walk in love because love never fails and it's a challenge it is because that where they're speaking you want to go and say that's not true that's not right but you can't keep going out trying to justify everything that's where you have to learn to trust that love will never fail yes and i'm not gonna let it pull me out of mm, peace i'm not gonna yeah. give my peace away into that situation we do not let what's on the outside get on the inside. We stay in the love of God. We stay walking in peace, knowing that God has said that peace, that love, sorry, never fails to produce. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm trusting that this is ministered to you tonight. I know today that it's ministered to me. There's been many trials that I've faced and I've got up and just prayed because God, 
I'm tempted to enter into this. This could happen. I can hear it all, that this could happen, that could happen. But you have to make a decision. It's not getting in me. I'm keeping it on the outside of me. And I'm trusting God to bring me to the other side of it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So, Father, I ask you to bless the people tonight. Musi itusima. And anyone that that's relevant for tonight, we pray for your peace to wrap around their hearts and their souls in the name of Jesus. You said, I will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on me. So we thank you for that peace tonight that passes all understanding. We give you all the praise and all the glory for each other. And thank you for the eagles tonight, Father. Thank you for your instruction in the word. Thank you that your word always brings life to us, peace to us, direction for our lives in Jesus' name. And we honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you have a wonderful night? I trust that this word ministered to you as much as it has to me, and it really has ministered to my heart. You have a wonderful weekend, and remember, if you're in Melbourne, we have a service at Doncaster at 10 a.m., one at Mill Park at 5 p.m., and coming up next month, we'll be starting a morning service over there at 10 a.m. as well, and we're online every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook. Facebook and YouTube. You have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And remember that God loves you and that he cares about every detail of your life.